Hey everyone, welcome to our Q&A episode where, hey, you guys leave me some questions and I will try to answer them here on the show. Let's get to our first question. This is from Jeffrey Platt. He says, have you ever played FF7 Original, Final Fantasy VII Original? I think that you and Miles would love it. Miles is my 13-year-old son. Um, yeah, I actually played it back on the PS1. I had the original multiple disc set. I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. It was roughly around the time when I was actually working at Electronics Boutique at uh, EB Games. And uh, yeah, I was one of the store employees there at the video game store back in the day at the mall, my local mall. So I couldn't wait to get it. Of course, all of the advertising, all of the hype about it. I'd never seen anything like it, like TV commercials and billboards and things. And of course, we had big things and setups all in the game store there for Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII. So uh, yeah, really exciting. I played it, of course, loved it. I don't, here's the thing, and I'm going to be honest with you, I don't remember finishing it. I might have. I, I just I don't remember finishing it, and yeah, maybe it was a you know adolescence. I don't know. I, I I'm fairly certain I probably finished it. Nevertheless, you're right. And now with all of the talk about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, of course, which just came out, and a couple of my friends said it's their favorite game of the year, could be their game of the year already, and that it's unbelievable. I want to go back before I play Remake. I've never played Final Fantasy VII Remake. I never played and I haven't played Rebirth yet and I'm going to hold off on that. And I think I want to go back and officially complete Final Fantasy VII. Go back to the beginning and, and play the original version, the PS1 version uh, from start. Of course, you can get it now very easily, you know, on the PSN network. You can buy it in the PlayStation Store. So easy that way. I might want to play it, though, on original, uh, original discs. Uh, maybe using the Poly Mega, so we'll see. Or I'll play it on my PS3, which can play backwards compatible. It'll play PS1, so we'll see. But yes, I think I absolutely want to go back and play Final Fantasy VII, the original, get that original experience before I dive into Remake and then Rebirth. And my son, who just beat Final Fantasy I, I think would love to play it as well. So I think maybe that'll be something we might do this summer. Thank you for that question. All right, here, next question, Hybrid Prime says, awesome, Clayton. Hopefully you and your family are well. Thank you. We are. And then says, okay, my question is, do you collect any vintage toys or anything else like that? Actually, uh, I just need to go over my shoulder here and get some. So just, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm back. So while I don't necessarily collect old vintage toys, like I don't, I don't go out and seek them. I don't go on eBay and try to find them. I do have some vintage toys still in my collection that I've given and handed down to my son to play with when he was growing up. Uh, now he's giving them back to me because he's a little bit old for, for the toys. So now they're like back on my shelf, which is kind of sad in a way, you know. But uh, but now he's buying his own. He's got, he just bought some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff. So he's got some stuff in his room. But yeah, for instance, like, you know, I've got my He-Man figures behind me. I've got some classic He-Man figures behind me. Some Star Trek. Um, I love my little Star Trek figurines. I have almost a whole set of those that sort of sit back on this shelf behind me here. I've got Spock. I've got a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the different characters there. But some of the ones I've actually started collecting, I just wanted to get the Amazing Spider-Man, the Marvel Legends series, um, the Amazing Spider-Man ones. And it's been hard to find, but I'm only really just getting the Amazing Spider-Man ones from that series. You can get the Fantastic Four and X-Men and everything, but I just really wanted to get those. I also love a few Amiibos. Not a lot, but I've got a few Legend of Zelda Amiibos and a few Metroid Amiibo. So not crazy, but I do have some of my Transformers, some of my He-Man, and some of my vintage figures sitting in my shelves. You might see them in my game room uh, from time to time. All right, next question. This one from Elmo Watches Wrestling. I love that name. Okay, Elmo, have you ever played Ninja Gaiden on the original NES in the early 90s? And if so, what did you think of its difficulty then? And for that matter, all of those super difficult NES games at that time, of course, I loved Ninja Gaiden. Are you kidding me? To play ninja games as a kid, I used to have throwing stars. You know, I used to have throwing stars. I took karate growing up. What kid didn't? But I got very, very far. I got up to brown belt uh, in karate. Okinawan Kempo was my karate. So I loved ninja stuff. And uh, I even had throwing stars that I would practice in my bedroom. And I grew up in Pennsylvania where we had screens over our windows. And it was a summer night. And I had my pillows and stuff set up on my bed beneath my windows. And I was practicing my throwing stars. And one just went errant and flew above my bed and flew right, smashed right through the screen window, ripped the, ripped the screen, and flew out into the yard. And my dad was super pissed. Super pissed. Why? 
Well, first of all, it's a screen that we just had installed throughout the house, and now I ruined it with a throwing star. So I understand now as a parent how pissed I would have been because that's like you have to get one fixed, one of those fixed. It never got fixed. I think if we went to that house, we sold the house, but it was still had like a hole right in the screen where bugs would come in. So yeah, but I loved Ninja Gaiden. But a lot of those classic NES games were super difficult. Metroid, I mean, was the first game I ever beat. Incredibly difficult. Kid Icarus, insanely difficult. Mega Man, are you kidding me? Mega Man 1, insanely difficult. Uh, Rygar, I put, I never beat Rygar. And that's on my list, my bucket list, to go back and beat Rygar. Talk about a game that's like impossible. Maybe in my, in maybe that age. Maybe now it's easy. Rygar to me was just impossible. So many classic games from the NES era that were just super difficult, like almost like intentionally made to not be beat, I guess. Of course, then I, today I, I see people on YouTube that like beat these games in like 45 minutes and it just blows my mind how they do it. I don't know. All right, next question here. If you were to create your perfect game, what would the story be and what would the gameplay be like? Thank you, Mr. D. You know, when I saw this message, I thought about it for like the last 24 hours since I saw your message, Mr. D. And I thought, well, I'll probably start with what is my what are my favorite top games of all time? What do I love about them? And right at the top of the list for me is exploration. I love exploring. Dragon Quest 1, Dragon Quest 2. Those were some of my favorite games ever. Dragon Quest 2, are you kidding me? Dragon Warrior 2, to what we were called, what was called for us. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, the exploration, the open world. So I do love, I do love the open world, but I also like it to be a little bit confined. I don't need it to be so big that it just goes on infinitely, but I do like the exploration, finding all of these different things and just the, the, the whimsy of it all. I, I really enjoy that. So I definitely would have exploration in my game. But I'd also want it like upscaled, like I loved God of War. So to have that style of graphics, but also with the Legend of Zelda style gameplay and exploration and and world building uh, would be would be in my wheelhouse. But I guess you could say, hey, maybe that's The Witcher 3. They've already made that game. Or that's Elden Ring, so they've already made that game. I don't know, it'd be really difficult for me to like come up with my own game. I've thought about it a lot actually lately. I've heard some friends that have like been making their own games. They're, they're studying um, RPG Maker and GB Studio and they're learning how to make their own games. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. You'd have to have a great story, first of all. So for me, it would be a story like a Lord of the Rings or a Hobbit, a quest, right? You're, someone comes to you, has a quest. You're, it's the hero's journey, right? That's maybe at the heart of any great video games. The hero's journey, and you've got to go explore, and you've got to overcome great challenges and reach the end of that challenge. Star Wars style, the hero's journey, the alchemist. Yeah, and just great gameplay along the way with fantastic side quests. So for me right now, Tears of the Kingdom sits at the top. I don't think I could probably beat that, but uh, maybe I'd like to. I, I, maybe I could try someday. Uh, all right, next question from Natalie Paramedic. Hey, Natalie, says, what is your favorite reality, gaming or real life? Natalie, I have to say, I loved this question. Natalie, UK paramedic, so you're in the UK. Uh, you know, I think real life is amazing. I, I love my family. I love spending time with my kids. The laughter that you get from just like laying in bed and tickling your you know kids and talking and laughing and hearing how their day is and all of that and, and going on trips and exploring. And seeing the world is amazing. Trying different foods and um, overcoming challenges. Life is about challenges. Someone recently left me a message about overcoming depression. And video games have really helped him through depression. And went through a really difficult time in his life. Where he had a whole series of awful things happen to him simultaneously. And I think life is about overcoming those challenges at increments. Some people get like three challenges dumped on them in one year. And it can be so debilitating where they start drinking and they do all sorts of awful things. But I think life is about trying to overcome those challenges throughout different stages. And uh, so in that way, I think that's amazing. But, man, to go into... I've been playing Xenoblade Chronicles and it's been pouring down rain. And 
the kids had things they had to be doing. They were off on doing like my daughter was at a sleepover and I and I got all my work done for the week and my wife was traveling and I was like, I'm just going to play some Xenoblade Chronicles in this pouring down rain. And I have to tell you, just the music and the ambiance and the world and the exploring. I enjoyed that reality rather than my rainy day. So I don't know, but I think I have to go with reality. <laughs> I think I... I think, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say the reality of my family and life and, and growing and learning and building businesses and, and all of those things is uh, probably more important than video games, I would say. Thank you for that question. Really a thought-provoking question, Natalie. All right, here's the next one. I need my glasses for this one here. This one is from Doc. Doc RY2FZ. Your independent spirit may be coverage of indie games. Your favorite single player experience or with family couch multiplayer? And uh, so then there was some other questions there. So what is my favorite single player, sing, single player experience or family couch? Um, hmm. That's tough because man, I gotta say growing up, I have some incredible memories playing couch co-op games, playing WrestleFest uh, or uh, WrestleMania, um, playing, you know, Star Control, uh, with my friends uh, playing, you know, all sorts of beat 'em up games with my friends growing up. So those experiences are second to none. You know, those are amazing, amazing experiences. Playing Double Dragon, you know, on the NES, and or just being at the arcade and playing uh, co-op games is some of my greatest memories ever as a ch as a child. But now, as I'm older, playing with my son and daughter, play we played uh, Mario Party the other night. Uh, and the four of us, me and my three kids, and we were laughing so much. We had such a blast playing that game. We played for like an hour and just like gut laughing. We were laughing so much. Um, so those are amazing. But then I have to say again, I come back to like playing Xenoblade Chronicles and getting to a flow state and Zen moments, playing Tears of the Kingdom and just, I really love a lot of those single player story games as well. But I have to say, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna say couch co-op is or multiplayer experience is is the best and we were playing hell divers four of us uh from my other show a whole team of us were playing hell divers the other night and having a blast we played for like three hours and we're laughing the whole time and having a blast i mean really really a great great time so i have to say multiplayer and with your friends is second to none i think it's probably to me that's the that's the bomb Next one, Young1YT. Thank you for your question. Young1 says, what are your earliest memories of playing video games? Well, I'll never forget when my dad brought Pong home and we, my sister was like really tiny. She's like two years younger than me. Playing Pong for the first time was, I remember in the, in the room where we were sitting or sitting on the floor while my dad was hooking it up to the television and I couldn't believe it. It was like, un, like a whole other world just opened up to me. It was unbelievable. And then playing Atari as a kid, you know, and getting that Atari system for the first time and, and playing Pac-Man in my house, even though that version of Pac-Man sucked, <laughs> you know, on the Atari. I played E.T., one of the worst games ever made. I had that cartridge. I played that. Uh, playing Adventure, one of the greatest games ever on Atari. Adventure was unbelievable. Of course, uh, Ready Player One, it's like the heart of the, the book and the movie Ready Player One is the game Adventure. So those are some of my earliest memories. And then as I got a little bit older, slightly a little bit older, I remember playing Load Runner on my Tandy computer. I loved Load Runner. Building those levels with my friends, we used to build levels and then we tried to solve them. And it was so much fun. We had floppy disks that we made with all of our different level designs and everything. So it was sort of like the precursor to Mario Maker, I guess. So those are some of my earliest memories, earliest, fondest memories uh, playing video games with my dad and just trying to create levels in Load Runner. Um, all right, next question here. Robert uh, Shemigelski says, since you also do Redacted, have you ever followed the Intellivision Amico saga? Um, like tangentially, I know a little bit about it, but because I saw your comment here, Robert, I'm gonna look more deeply into it and maybe I'll read a book on it. If there's a good book out there on it, I'd love to read, I'd love to read a book about video game history and if there's like a really good book written about this interesting story from video games past, I'll read it because I love reading and that sounds like a lot of fun and really interesting. Okay, a few more questions here. DLC says, which has been your all-time favorite game or game series? Uh, DLC says, mine is either Borderlands or Assassin's Creed. 
I own a Borderlands game. Um, I just ordered Borderlands 3. I've never played it, but it's on its way. Assassin's Creed, my son has been playing. I've never played it personally, so I can't speak to those. Favorite game or game series? Well, I mean, I think it's odd because some of the modern games have become some of my favorite series. The Breath of the Wild and then Tears of the Kingdom are two of the greatest games I've ever played and in many ways got me back into gaming. But also Metroid Dread, which is a part of a series, the Metroid series. Metroid was the first game I ever beat. Notice the sweatshirt. That's a Metroid there for you. First game I ever beat on the NES. And I just last year or two years ago beat Metroid Dread. And I talked about how this is the game that really got me back into gaming, Metroid Dread. And it reminded me how much I love Metroid. So now I've you know played Metroid Prime Remastered. My son is playing Metroid Prime Remastered. So I love Metroid. I absolutely love Metroid. But um, yeah, I have to say I'm a huge fan of the modern Zelda experience too. So yeah, but there's so many great series. I mean, there's so many great series. There's so many great games. It's hard to sort of pick one. I will say though, lately I've been really enjoying the Ease series. So played Ease books one and two, Ease Origin. I'm gonna start to go through and play all the Ease games. But the ones that really stick with me that have been in my life from many, many years ago, Zelda playing all the Zelda games growing up to the modern Zelda games. Almost like nothing like it, really, right? So thanks for that. All right, uh, here's Post Nut Clarity asks, what's your opinion about Deus Ex? Have you played it? Again, I bought Deus Ex. I have it for the PS3. Um, I bought it uh, on a game hunt. I know that I want to play it. I've heard great things about it. So it is on my backlog to play Deus Ex. Again, I've heard great things about it. And I don't know if there's any sort of modern ports uh, updated ports. I think it lives on the PS3 right now. Am I wrong about that? Let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong about that. But I think that's the case, and that's why I bought it. <laughs> I think so, but I could be wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm often wrong, but that's okay. Here's another question. Valeron Steel Katana. Okay. Well, Valeria Steel, Valerian Steel Katana. Now I got it. Valerian Steel Katana. Okay. What are your top games from each generation? Multiple titles per generation are allowed if there are multiple standouts. Whew. What are my top games from each generation? Well, if you go back to the Atari generation, again, Adventure, uh, Pitfall, um, Defender. Oh my God, remember Defender on the Atari? Yeah, those were some, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of any other Star Wars games back then. Mm, they're okay. Uh, but from that era, yeah, you know, you had Pac-Man, of course, and uh, Defender, uh, and those types of games. Adventure, Pitfall. So those were my top games. Frogger from that era. Uh, then if you moved on up to the, the Nintendo, uh, for me, again, Metroid, greatest game, one of the greatest games ever. Then playing Mario Brothers was transformative. Playing Super Mario Brothers, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was, inc it was like, magical to me to play Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 2, Mario Brothers 3, and then watching that series progress all the way up to the Nintendo 64 and beyond. And now I just beat Super Mario Brothers Wonder. So even as a kid, I was playing those games, even as a 47 year old man playing the Super Mario series. The first game my son ever beat is Super Mario Brothers Odyssey, which is an amazing game. So I've seen that progression up. So the, the Mario games in that era, um, then as you get into like, I mean, the PS1 era, um, maybe we can go back a little bit to the Genesis for a minute here. Like, uh, I would say Shinobi on Sega Genesis, Sonic games, um, of course, on the Sega Genesis, uh, some great RPGs on the Sega Genesis. I liked some of the, uh, the like, Quackshot series uh, from, from Disney. And then as you get into the PS1, RPGs, right? I mean, Final Fantasy, can you, you know, that's where Tomb Raider. Oh my God, Tomb Raider changed my life. I couldn't believe it. How what an amazing series this was. Playing, playing uh, Final Fantasy VII on the PS1. Uh, so top games. Yeah, Tomb Raider. I'm excited for the remasters that are coming out. But it's interesting now as you get into this era, right? The PS5, and you're thinking, what is like the top game on the PS5? I don't know. I mean, I guess maybe Spider-Man. Spider-Man 2, I mean, you know, but it feels we don't I don't feel like we have those This this level right now on the PS5 or the Xbox Series X like what is the the game that you're like? Yeah, this is the reason to go out and run and buy one of these things. I Don't know. 
the Nintendo Switch has some amazing games. Again, I come back to the Zelda series and, and so forth. But yeah, I mean, I hopefully I think I got some good wins in there. I'm just and I'm just spitballing here off the top of my head. So let me know what you think about that. And all right, and final question here. This is Techno Game 78, 1978. It says, oh my, so many games, so little time. If all stays steady in the world, where do you see gaming in the near future? With all this new tech coming out, will gaming get a big upgrade or will it be slow to change? Think about the major advancements that we saw from the 8-bit era to the 16-bit era on and up, up to the 64, you know, up to the Nintendo 64 and, you know, going from, uh, uh, you know, go, even going from, I don't know, the, the PS3 up to the PS5. I don't really feel like we're going to see massive changes. We'll maybe improve frame rate and maybe some better textures. I know Xbox has been talking about the next big advancement in the next year is going to be announced and it could be AI, artificial intelligence. I don't know what that exactly means for, for gaming. VR has kind of been a bit of a flop, let's be honest. Uh, we like our VR too. It's been fun, but it's not, most of the time we're not even playing it. We're playing our other games, uh, non-VR experience games. So I don't know what the next major advancement is going to be. I think you know, I think it's like we sort of plateaued. And I think in many ways, maybe the next big advancement, honestly, this is what I think about this. And the next big advancement for games may actually be instead of putting $300 million into a game and worrying about all sorts of textures and shadows and making sure that every trash can, you know, there's a team devoted to like making trees in development, like with thousands of people working at these game development studios. And then they go out of business. They lose, they have to lay off thousands of people because they're just so overburdened making these 300, 400 million dollar games like Spider-Man 2 and all this stuff. And if they get a flop, it literally kills their company. So I would love to see a return to a time when we had all sorts of crazy experiments like in the PS2 era where games were just, you can't believe the types of games that came out. They were taking chances. They were smaller games. And I think maybe that'll be the next big advancement. In many ways, it's like the fall of the Roman Empire and going into the Dark Ages. And I think in those Dark Ages, where you're having this collapse, we might see like a rise of some really interesting game games that are smaller, they're uh, a lot of fun, they're totally experimental, and we just throw caution to the wind with them. And we, we, don't, we, we say, hey, you know what? We don't need these $400 million games with a trash can being picture perfect. Like, give us a lot of variety. So maybe that's where we're headed. I don't know. I'd love to hear your comments, though. Drop me some comments here and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate that. I'm going to do these Q&As every so often because you guys bring up so many great questions. And I thought, this is perfect. Let's put them in an episode. So please subscribe to the channel if you love video games, if you love just talking about things. Hey, I'm almost 50 years old in a few years. And you know, it's just great to be able to hang out with you guys and talk about a hobby and a passion of mine, which is video games. So much love to all of you guys. We'll see you next time.